welcome back to Alice Talks Football and in today's video I'm going to make it a fun video it's going to be who should Manchester United buy and sell in the summer transfer market but I want to make it a fun video where you can all get involved in the comment section down below where you're going to put your ins and outs as well now we're going to imagine a scenario where basically the board the Glazers have contacted us and told us that we're in charge of recruitment for Manchester United this summer and they've given us some ground rules that we must sell four players this window and we must sign four players this window. They've also told us we have a budget of £120 million net spend. So that is basically £120 million plus the money we make player sales to sign four players. Now let's imagine that the summer chance of window is going to open soon. Realistically it's, go it's going to open in like August. But let's imagine it's going to open soon. And just to make this video easier I'm going to go off player values as of a month ago rather than player values now because obviously we don't really know player values now because the pandemic player values have decreased but I, we we're not quite sure of player values as of right now so I'm just going to go off what player values were like a month ago just to clarify that up. So remember to get involved with yours in the comment section down below and I'm going to start with the outs who should we sell because that is the easier one but before I get into that it would be amazing if you could hit that like button and then subscribe down below to Alice Talks Football so you don't miss daily Manchester United related content from me if you're new click that subscribe click that subscribe button, click that bell, also share it with your friends if you enjoy the channel and yeah let's get into it. So who should we sell? Now first things first, we have seven centre backs. We have Tuan Zabi, Lindelof, Bailly, Maguire, Jones plus Rojo and Smalling out on loan. Seven centre backs and for me I want to sell at least two of those centre backs because we don't need seven. I don't want to play three at the back formation. If you play three at the back formation or five at the back formation you have six centre backs. If you're playing four at the back you have four or five fit centre backs in the squad. So I wanted to sell two centre backs first of all. Now the first centre back I want to sell and the most obvious one is Phil Jones. He's been at the club a very long time. You know, he had a good potential ahead of him, but it hasn't worked out. He's been he's had a very poor injury record. He's lost confidence. He's sort of a meme. He scored on goals. He can't even get in the team now. He's Oli's last choice centre back. He needs to go. This season, if we don't have to play Phil Jones, we won't. Even if we're playing some Wi-Fi password in the Europa League, instead of resting Harry Maguire, he's too scared to play Phil Jones. So he'll play Harry Maguire and Baye, and then the next game he'll play Harry Maguire and Lindelof. He only plays Phil Jones when there's so many injuries that he has to, or there's literally nothing to lose. Showing that Phil Jones is not wanted in the squad, he's not trusted. If we take out the Tranmere game, because really they're not a proper team, and we look at the last two times that Manchester United played with Phil Jones in the starting squad, that was Sheffield United 3-3 and Man City when we lost 3-1. The only two times we've conceded three goals, three or more goals, we've only conceded three, this season. And Phil Jones started in both of those games. The two times where we are our worst defensively all season, Phil Jones was in that defence. He, there's a picture of him at the Sheffield United game where everyone's making an offside line, and there's Phil Jones. He was just awful against Man City, got mugged off by De Bruyne and Mahrez. For me, Phil Jones is the first guy that needs to go. It's just not worked out for Manchester United. And we're rumoured to get £12 million for him. So that, straight away, is enough. £12 million for Phil Jones. Now, who is the second centre-back? Well, it's between the two loanies, Rojo and Smalling. Now, out of the two, Smalling is the better centre-back. However, if we sell Smalling, we're going to get double for Smalling than what we are for Rojo. Plus... If Smalling comes back to Manchester United, he wants to be playing regularly because he's been playing regularly for Roma. However, Oli might be looking, well, he's old. I want to give Tu and Zabi a chance or I like Bailly or Lindelof more. He might want to put them alongside Maguire. So he's like, look, Smalling, you're not going to be a first team regular. So Smalling's just going to want to move anyway. Whereas Rojo, he's happy to be a squad player. And Rojo also gives us depth in the left back position as well. So I'm going to sell Chris Smalling and we can get £25 million for Chris Smalling. That is his value that's what Arsenal apparently bid it for and that's what Roma want him for. Now the next player we're going to go to a midfielder and attacking midfielder so you're already knowing it's going to be either Pereira or Lingard. Now for me I've gone with Jesse Lingard. Now I love Jesse Lingard. He loves the club. He tries his best for the club. He wants to beat the club. He wants to make it right but it's just not working. He's had over a year to make it right. He's had more than enough chances. You know he's a great guy. He loves the club. You know he's been at the club all his life. He's a big fan but it's just not working for him and I think for his career and the club, he needs to split ways. You know, it's just not worked, he's had his chance, and his player value is actually 25 million pounds as well. Now, it was between Pereira and Lingard, but I think Pereira hasn't had as many chances as Lingard. He's much younger, and I actually think Pereira has been better than Lingard this season. There's been a few games where Pereira's actually been pretty decent, in my opinion. 
So, like, I think Pereira does... Yeah, yeah, Pereira's probably not good enough, but I do think he gets a lot of unnecessary hate, if you want my honest opinion. So Jesse Lingard was the third player to go. Now, who is my fourth out? Now, my fourth out is going to be Alexis Sanchez. Now, this is the hardest player we're going to be to sell, because he has 500k a week wages or something ridiculous like that. So what I'm thinking is, we need to get rid of him. We want to send him off to some MLS club for maybe £8 million. I don't even know if we get that much money, but we're going to say £8 million. You know, we, we're desperate to sell him. You know, he returns from his loan into Milan. He comes back to us in the summer and there's no place in the squad because, you know, we want a young, fresh squad. And we're going to go, let's sell him for £8 million. So, so far, we've made £70 million in player sales, giving us a budget of £120 million net spend for £70 million. So now we have a budget of £190 million to spend on four new players. So let's get into my ins. And my number one priority this summer, I was Manchester United. It's the £100 million man, the most obvious player that's going to be on the ins list, Jadon Sancho. He's going to be around £100 million, which is like 100 and something million euros. Okay, we need a right winger. We're desperate for an out and out right winger. He's young, he's English, he's the bit, he's the next big thing. He's up there with a future Ballon d'Or winner. He's skillful, he's quick, he suits the counter attacking style of play. Manchester United only have 31% of their attacks down the right wing, the lowest in the league showing their need for a right winger. Jadon Sancho is the perfect right wing candidate. He wants to come, we want him. He's the first man we will try and get him and we will go all out for. And that is 100 million pounds. That is the first guy that we want to bring to the club. He also is a creative player. And I think Martial and Rashford, their goal scorers, are not creators. And we need another creator in the scene, but in the attack. Bruno's a creator, Pogba's a creator, Matas a creator, but all three of them aren't gonna be playing. We need in the creator in the and the first player we're going to bring in is Jadon Sancho, £100 million. That gives us about £90 million left. Now the next player on this list is not Jack Grealish. For me, Pogba's staying. Jack Grealish is not priority. We do not need to spend £60 million on a cam to be our backup cam to Bruno and Pogba, a backup left winger to Rashford and a backup left right winger to Sancho. We don't want to spend over £50 million on a backup player, a squad player. He's not gonna get into that starting 11. So I've gone with Norwich's Wendy for the second player. And because Norwich look likely to get relegated, I think he would cost around 18 million pounds. Now only 23, he can play on the right. He can play as a cam, he's a good squad player. He'll be good for rotation. He's, he's got good potential ahead. He'll be good next to Bruno. Bruno can help guiding him to a top player. Now Buendia this season has seven assists. Only Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mares, and De Bruyne have more assists in the league this season. He's in a struggling Norwich side and he has the second most dribbles completed this season. And he's in the top five for chances created and big chances created in the Premier League this season in a struggling Norwich side. So in terms of creativity, he offers a lot more than Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish offers a bit more on goal scoring and leadership, but in terms of creativity, Buendia offers more. And when teams sit back against us, creativity is what we need. And 18 million pounds of Buendia is the second player on my ins list. So we now have exactly 72 million pounds left to buy our next two players. And after a right winger, the priority position for me is a CDM. Now there's lots of CDMs out there, Sano Tonali, Sume, Rice, Party, and Didi, Sicaria. All that would probably come to Manchester United and prove them. I'm not the biggest fan of Declan Rice myself, but you know. And because I've kept Pogba and because I've got Bruna at the team, I want a lone CDM, a CDM that can be almost a shield for the defence. Because we're normally playing the 4 2 3 one sister, but now we have Pogba and Bruno, we want to play them together. So we want them to be as number eight. And I want a CDM that will play as a lone CDM, shield CDM, like a like a proper attack or CDM. So I'm looking at player values there. A 42 million pound release clause. Thomas Partey is a player I'm going to play there. I saw him play against Liverpool, how he blocked off the front three. He's in the prime of his career, so he adds a core to the team because we have a lot of young players, so that means inconsistency. Now we've got an experienced core player. He's not just physical, but he's also pacey, he's a tackler. £42 million release course, that means we have £30 million left. So the fourth, third player on the ins is Thomas Partey for me. Now, we have £30 million left, for the, left to buy the fourth player. Now, I don't really know who to buy. Do I look at future stars? Do I look at maybe a centre back or a striker or even a left back? I don't really know. But for me, I feel like the three players he brought in is enough to take us to the next level. So I want to go with a future star. And I know it's a little bit boring because it's a player that we've been linked to a lot, but I'm going to go with Jude Bellingham. He's rumoured to cost around £30 million. He's consistently playing at the Championship at the age of 16. That's a really high level for a 16 year old. The Championship is a very competitive league. It's probably as good as League Un, like to be honest. And, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to sign him for £30 million and then we're going to loan him back 
to Birmingham for a season because I think, you know what, I'm happy with our defence. I'm content with it. You know, maybe next summer I'll look at the defence and maybe a second striker to back up Martial. But, you know, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go with the future start and I'm going to go with Jude Bellingham. Now, there are my four ins and my four outs under the ground rules. Now, I want to see yours in the comments section down below. Have a look at it. I want to see what you guys have put. Let me know your thoughts on my four ins, four outs. Would you change? And also, if you haven't already, please hit that like button and subscribe down below to Alice Talks Football. Share this video with your friends, get them to get involved. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time.